You won't believe what crazy thing is Roll for Crits going to say on this week's Kickstarter Pickstarter for July 20th, 2020. Damio Rebirth of the Empire is a dice drafting and territory control game when you will be playing as daimyos in a post-apocalyptic world where you are going to try to spread your clan's influence by sending out your own governors around to either increase your reputation or rebuild radio towers, maybe also trying to send out some shadows to kill off your opponents, and some scavengers to get some well-buried tech. This is a game that's all about controlling this archipelago, but to do actions, you're gonna draft dice of different color because on your board, you're going to have different sections of different colors and to trigger them, you're gonna need dice of those colors. You can also use those dice in adding them together to activate different cards. So for example, if you have a card that has a six, you could use a two and a four to use that card's power. The other interesting thing is as you build around the map, by building structures, you're gonna actually take different pieces and slot them into your board, making different actions stronger. So at the beginning of the game, you're all gonna be pretty similar in what your actions do. However, as you build up, maybe one person adds a different resource whenever they trigger the blue die, when someone puts that in a red die slot, meaning you're gonna go different asymmetrical paths depending on what you're going for. I thought this was a very clever idea. I love the sort of starting off right here and going asymmetrical it really makes those choices matter and makes the dice drafting a lot more fun because before maybe that one action was okay, but now you've added that in. It's a little bit scary to leave you that die. Maybe other people may be forced to take that from you. Yeah, I love dice. I love drafting. And like you, I think the any game where you kind of start out in the same plane, but you can fine tune your strategy. So by the end of it, everyone's working in a different way. I think that's really interesting. And the theme looks cool as well. It's something that brought me back to times of playing Rising Sun a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's, I know it's something that uh, catches your eye too. It is a little different because it's not really in ancient Japan. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't remember if they even say the location. It's like post-apocalyptic. It's almost like somehow only Japanese culture survived the apocalypse. So yeah. that's what everyone goes by. Okay, I, I like it. I like it. It's 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 unique. It's a fresh take on on the mythology. It's interesting to say the least. Now, if you want the game, you can get it for about $79. This includes most of the pieces as meeples. They do have some extra upgrade packs you can buy, as well as a whole thing of miniatures if you really want to go all in on your pledge. The Fuzzies is a new party game from the team behind Monikers and Wavelength. It's a very goofy dexterity game. You will probably compare it to Jenga when you see it, but instead of wooden blocks, you use these colorful fuzzy little balls, kind of like little lint balls, but they all stick together somehow. I'm not sure actually if it's just through static electricity or if they have some kind of other wizardry going on in the material these are made of, but they turn themselves into this tower of s balls stuck together, and on your turn, you have to remove a certain color and then place it on the top of the tower and you don't want the tower to fall down naturally. You are not allowed to get out of your chair when you choose to take one of the balls and place it on the top, but it does have a little turntable so you can spin the thing around and look at different angles of it, which I think is a, a nice touch for a game like in Jenga, you know, usually you wanna examine from every angle to figure out uh, where your best move might be. And there are gonna be some twists along the way where you might draw a card that tells you you have to cover your eyes or one of your eyes in order to take your next piece or something goofy like that to make it a little more challenging. This is definitely a very simple party game that uh, maybe some viewers will not be super interested in, but I, I think it looks fun enough and goofy enough and I like the way that it's compact and easy to set up and pack away. Again, compared to something like Jenga where it takes like 10 minutes just to build that tower. With this one, the little balls just they stick together, you group them back up and then you put them in a jar like very quick and easy. I'm really curious about this, especially how weird the dexterity can go. I'm curious what those cards have, because I think that's where a lot of the fun will come from. I'm also, that chair rule, does it count if I stand on the chair? <laughs> I, I think you're supposed to stay seated, but but you can try to cheat if you want. I, I won't tell anybody. Uh, and so, to the yeah. creators, though, they should borrow your quote. Not sure of static electricity or magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that on the box. To, it'll, it'll sell some copies, I think. <laughs> uh, you can back this one right now for about $19 if you want the fuzzies. 
Our next game comes from Cryptozoic, which means 90% of the time we're dealing with a copyrighted product, and this is no exception. This game is based on the Steven Universe TV show, and it's titled Steven Universe Beachapalooza Card Battling Game. In this word salad of a title game, you'll be playing as Steven Universes from alternate timelines who are going to win the Beachapalooza. Of course, things always won't be so easy, and there's going to be party crashers that stop you from gaining a larger audience and making sure your band doesn't rock as well as it can. Of course, your band members will be able to fight back and possibly fuse into different combinations, a core mechanic, I guess you could say, of the TV show, and you'll be able to fight them off to earn points. Whoever earned the most points is going to be the winner. The Steven Universe is a show that I've always wanted to watch and just... It's uh, one of those things I've been terrible about, especially if it's not on a e streaming service. And this just looks like a very fun, simple way of like, you still get that fun of like, oh, what are all the different combinations you can get from the different gems and also Steven, as well as like the villains. And it just has that seems to have that light party flair that the show, at least on the surface, has. Yeah, haven't watched the show either. Uh, but always heard good things about it. And how can you go wrong with a name like Beacha Palooza? And, <laughs> and battling? I mean, it's two of my favorite things in one title. <laughs> I am sure if you are a bigger fan of this show, there's going to be a lot more deeper cuts in there that you will enjoy. So if you're interested in Steven Universe, or maybe you're like us and looking for a way to get started to see what the show's like, you can take a look at this one. It's only $30. You can back it right now. Now, here is a series of escape room style puzzle games, this time coming in the form of a book. It's Sherlock's Mysteries, and it includes 10 chapters. Each one is a case that will last you roughly one to two hours. It'll have a series of puzzles and ciphers and codes for you to figure out. And then once you get to the end of it, there will be an overarching mystery that will connect all of the cases. And you'll have one final meta case and meta puzzle that you need to figure out. I'm a sucker for these kinds of games. I kind of feel bad every week. I hope hopefully people aren't sick of hearing about these uh, escape room mystery puzzle games. But I really love the idea of having them contained in a book. There's also there's the Maze of Games book from um, from uh, Mike Selinker that I, I think is a maybe a similar kind of an idea. But I love having it feel more like a narrative. Uh, because that often lends itself to these puzzle games naturally. Obviously, the Sherlock Holmes theme is, is a part of that as well. But being able to have, you know, just wherever you are, you're on the bus, you're on a plane, you're at the office, whatever you're doing, taking a lunch break, you can just open up a book and do some puzzles. Now, it does also involve an app uh, that you will sometimes be inputting things and finding videos and clues. Uh, what's nice about this one, too, is... You can download that app completely, so you don't need an internet connection, and you don't need to worry about them ever shutting the app off for any reason. There's also an extra level with an attache case filled with physical stuff. So for a lot more money, you can make it like a real escape room with code wheels and all kinds of little objects to play with. But I feel like for me, what makes this one seem more interesting and unique is the book form. Yeah, I mean, of course we love the games. And Jonathan, remember, this is Roll for Crit's Kickstart Pixar. It's just what we pick. That's you know? right. <laughs> it's it's ours. We get to decide. <laughs> and I know this is something that I, you know, it's the kind of thing that you would be in due to. <laughs> you know me. We both get excited whenever we're given like these puzzle games with stories attached to them. It's cool stuff. So you can get that journal for around 30 US dollars. Uh, there's also some extra levels. You can even get another chapter added on. So take a look at Sherlock's Mysteries. <laughs> We started off with an apocalypse and we're ending with one. In Turris, a worker placement game, you are playing as the last sort of sliver of humanity trying to rebuild the tower in order to fend off these giant attacking demons. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, there are giant attacking demons and they find your workers very tasty. So throughout this game, you're going to be placing workers along a board on different spaces. Some of these spaces have immediate rewards, sometimes you have to wait until you recall them to complete missions. These missions will help you build the tower. Whoever puts the most effort in the tower is going to be chosen to be the leader of humanity. That's why you're still competing against each other. Of course, these demon, these giant creatures are going to be roaming the board, and if they find your people, they're going to eat them up because they're tasty snacks. Now, you can always get them back, but it's going to be a high price to pay, so you're going to want to be careful if it's worth sacrificing one of your scouts to get whatever that placement adds. 
it's very interesting because usually in worker placements, the only thing you need to worry about is someone taking your spot, not some strange creature roaming about on different spots and eating things up. And each creature seems to have its own way of going about, so it's not always just go to the nearest person maybe. It's going to probably have something a bit more creative than that, depending on the, the monster. So I thought it was an interesting twist on the worker placement genre. Yeah, I like that idea. It's like you're worried about almost like natural disasters that everyone is concerned about equally. And the design of some of those monsters looks really cool. There's like a giant crocodile. <laughs> there's some there's mm-hmm. some wild stuff. Yeah, I mean, it has that miniature flair, but it doesn't seem to be too much of just moving a thing on the board. I'm really curious and, and see how this actually plays maybe later on if this does get funded. You can help back them right now for around $75. So take a look if you're looking for a twist on your worker placement. A wide range of selections this week from the lighter end to the more cerebral puzzle side to more traditional genres of games with some twists on them. And we'd be interested to know what you are backing this week. Any of the ones we talked about, something different, or maybe you are saving your money up, seeing what's going to be available and released next week during Gen Con Online, where we will be eagerly uh, watching too and hopefully talking to you guys next week. Let us know in the comments down below. Either way, we would like to hear about it. Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. This is Roll for Crit. We would love it if you liked and subscribed to this channel and supported us on Patreon as well. If you choose to support us, turn to page 25.